Hello everyone, welcome once again to The Life Engine. Now we've got a healthy little ecosystem here, lots of diversity, with a little containment cell here in the middle. Now we have this because we're about to introduce this little fella. Meet Ned, a single-celled organism. He has this little biohazard warning here, I'm sure that's nothing. So let's go ahead and add him into the world, drop a few right in the center. Thankfully, these walls should keep him contained in case there's anything dangerous about Ned, and the rest of the ecosystem should be safe. Well... So, Ned can go through walls and he kills everything. Oh, look, the final rose survived. Uh, really lived up to its name. Well, let's see if it survives a second wave. Nope. So anyway, Ned is unnatural, which means he has many cells stacked on the same location, specifically four eyes that look in all directions, a mouth, a mover, a killer, and armor all on top of one another. He is also not centered, he has no central pivot cell, which means when he rotates he kind of jumps around, and that allows him to rotate through walls and armor and organisms. I call him unnatural because all of these features are not usually allowed, they can't be evolved or even created in the editor. Ned stands for Non-Euclidean Destroyer, and he was crafted with unholy magic by one of my Discord moderators, No Leaf Clover. No Leaf did this by violating natural law and directly editing Ned's save file. An organism's save file looks like this, it's written in a language called JSON. By directly editing the JSON, you can add cells or move them in a way that isn't normally allowed in the life engine, which gives the organism a huge unfair advantage. It's a kind of genetic editing, and No Leaf has been dying to add Ned to the life engine for a long time. Ned is truly a nasty little creature, he just deletes any ecosystem he's introduced to, so thank you No Leaf for this abomination. Now, Ned doesn't kill every world, some worlds are pretty resilient, and I'll let you discover where he dominates and where he doesn't. There is, however, always going to be some unnatural organism that dominates any environment, because, well, they can cheat. Now, you can also defend against Ned with the new brush size tool that I finally added. It allows you to create massive walls that are too big for Ned to rotate through, which keeps your ecosystem safe. Now you can play with Ned yourself by finding him in the Community Creations window, it's this button in the top right, as well as uh, there are several new organisms and worlds that I'm going to show off in this video. Um, but first, you've probably noticed this mods list on the right, which these are just links to different fan-made modifications of the Life Engine. The first one here is the Life Engine Extended, created by SpaceEye, which is written in C++, which means it can go a lot faster. Now if we set the max TPS ticks per second to negative one, which means unlimited, then we hit enter, we can see that it goes a bit faster. We're talking about 2000 ticks per second here, a 10 times speed up. The original life engine is written in JavaScript, which is not the best language for simulations. It is very, very slow. Really, I should have done what SpaceEye did, write it in C++ for speed and then compile it for the web. You can run experiments so much faster. Speed is not the only improvement though, there are lots of cool additions, I'm not going to be able to show them all off in this video. There are a ton of new evolution controls you can see, for instance, uh, you can set the cost and the life point and other parameters of individual cell types. Uh, there are also differences with how the simulation actually works, for instance, there is continuous movement where the organisms have velocity and that velocity is determined by the brain, which means the brain works differently and it can weight different observations with continuous values instead of the really basic movement of the original. Now, For some reason the organisms seem not to evolve eyes over time, and talking with space eye this might be due to the way that they move, so that might change. The way organisms are grown is different, their structure is defined by actual genetic code, as in a set of instructions that build the organisms, which is really cool. Uh, there are world events where simulation parameters can change over time or are triggered by certain events. Uh, there's custom textures, screen recording, lots of stuff to play with. Overall, if you're bored with the original Life Engine and you want something more, check out the Life Engine Extended. It is really something else. Super impressive. Great job, Space Eye. The next mod is the Camo Healer Cell mod, made by Zyko. This adds two new cells, the Healer Cell, which has a small chance each tick of granting back life to damaged organisms, and the Camo Cell, which are invisible to other organisms. 
Uh, here I've made a big producer that uses both kinds of cells, and ideally it should be basically invisible to killers and be able to withstand damage because of the healer cells. I'm not quite sure it's working as it should. It does seem like predators can see and hunt these guys, which shouldn't be possible, but maybe I'm not quite understanding it. Regardless, the healer cells do seem to help, and if you allow it to evolve for a while, you'll see some interesting things emerge. And finally, we have the Neural Networks mod by Brady B that was made a long time ago, but it's still up and running, and boy is it cool. I think the way the brains work is heavily inspired from this video, if you've seen it, and basically allows for organisms to decide movement in a much more complex and dynamic way from the original version. They usually start moving in one particular direction, but then eventually figure out more intelligent ways of staying centered and then seeking food and avoiding obstacles and predators. It's really cool to watch happen, and yes, this is something that I would like to eventually add to the life engine, but I want to do it in my own way, and I'd like to build it so that you, the human, can look inside the brain and edit it yourself. This would be a lot of work for me, but it's on my list. I should explain that all these mods are made and hosted by the modders, and a huge thanks to them for doing that. If you'd like to make your own mod and have it featured on the Life Engine, shoot me a link on Discord, and basically, if it runs, I'll add it. Alright, now to check out some other worlds. This first one is called Chains, and, well, it's made up of these funny little creatures that link together in long chains. If we open one up in the editor here, we can take a look at it and see how it works. Uh, hmm, that... Kinda looks like a... Pecker! Oh, where? Wait, that's not a woodpecker, it looks like someone's private! And they stick into each other's butts. Guys, this is nature, and nature is beautiful, okay? It's just what life does. Look, I know you can make PP plants in the life engine. I've seen them, I've made them, it's just natural. Uh, normally, I don't care to see them posted in my Discord server, but I like this one because it's a genuinely altruistic colony. It's probably one of the best ones I've seen. Each top organism generates food for the bottom organism, and uh, the whole system is pretty resilient against predators and parasites. Uh, one could say they're a bit too friendly with each other, but that's not for me to judge. If it works, it works. Now, on the note of funny shapes in the life engine, I also know that you can make insignias of certain 20th century fascist dictatorships. It is very funny all 3,000 times it's been posted to the Discord server. I'm being sarcastic. Please don't do that. I've seen enough of it. Now, there are a couple other altruistic ecosystems that were submitted too. Uh, this one with altruistic Arthur, and this one with a symbiotic relationship between these small movers eating the food made by the large producers. Uh, basically, all of these friendly ecosystems can be exploited by predators or parasites, or at least be outcompeted by less friendly organisms. At some point, I'll do a full video of altruism in the life engine and explain why it's so hard to achieve in a stable way. We also have this ostracod slide, which has some very big blob organisms. I think you can keep expanding them by slowly turning down the lifespan multiplier bit by bit, and increasing the mutation probability of adding cells. Eventually, they should evolve into some truly massive creatures with hundreds of cells, though I haven't seen anyone recreate one of the gigantic boys like Bob here. If anyone does this, you will be featured. There are also a couple simple but interesting worlds with pre-made wall structures, this zoo one, which you might recognize from a video I made a long time ago, and this sand grid one, which encourages a very different kind of evolution. And then we have Epic. Not much to say about this one, it's just large and diverse with lots of interesting organisms. Finally, we only have two more organisms besides Ned. The first is the Spinner, which is a predatory, moving hunter that sort of spins when it touches other organisms, and touches them with its killer cells and then its mouths. This makes it a very effective killer, which is rare for movers of its size. Then there is the Sword, which really doesn't need any explanation. Uh, 
Now, thanks to everyone who made anything for the Life Engine. Uh, I really love my little community. In other community news, I'm working on a new video about AI. Here's a little sneak peek. The AI art channels are still up and running on Discord, and we now have the totally free AI art generator Blue Willow. If you're sick of AI, you can also post human-made art in the human art channel. We've got some cool stuff there too. Again, I'm super thankful to everyone who made stuff for the Life Engine, especially the modifications. They are really, really cool. I know I haven't added a lot of new features to the Life Engine recently. I've been messing around with stuff, but I just haven't quite found anything that made the cut. But I'll keep experimenting, I'm definitely not done with it. For now, thanks for watching and playing, and I'll see you next time.